Welcome back. I'm the Imperial and this is more Star Trek Resurgence. And let's check out the price of duty. Captain Solano was furious with our defiance of his orders. And we'll see what happens to us now. Millie. I'm good. Help me with him. He got fried. Let's get this off. Oh no. Medical. Got one wounded at my location. Carter. You don't look so good. Oh, thanks. That's what you want to hear after risking your life. I just got here. I'm not ready to see you two get blown to space dust just yet. Now let's get you down to sick bay. Everyone is raising their eyebrows so hard in this game. Status report. The repair crew made it inside. EPS flow is back to nominal levels. The SIF is back up. How does this affect mission readiness, Mr. Ermat? Releasing the docking clamps using hull polarity minimized damage to the Resolute. We'll have some last-minute repairs to make, but if we reapportion some of the staff, we can make our departure on time. As of now, however, we are successfully moored to the station. Good to hear. Send updates to my ready room. Commander Rydek, with me. Ah, oh, now now we're gonna get angry words directed at us. You disobeyed my orders. Yep. Well. Respectfully, Captain, I made the right choice given the information I had. You disobeyed my orders. And not just in front of the bridge crew, but the Starbase staff as well. That's going to get around. My name's already tarnished around the fleet. Well, maybe for good but reason. What is it going to do to my credibility on this ship? From the top to the bottom. Bridge to lower decks. Captain, I told you I'd be honest. So here it is. Maybe I shouldn't have disobeyed a direct order. But you were wrong. You weren't on board and you didn't have all the information. So I made the right decision for the ship. If you're worried about your credibility, put your ego aside and trust your crew. Trust me. Dang. You might have won some fans on the bridge with that stunt. But not everyone. Lieutenant Commander Chovak has already bent my ear. I'm sure he doesn't take it personally. He'll get over it in time. Mr. Chovak is more complicated than he would want to admit. I guess we all are. It's getting real in here. And if I'm being honest, I'm not sure what I would have done in the moment either. You never really know if you weren't in those shoes. So, let's just boil it down to, you did what you had to. That'll have to be good enough for me. Am I dismissed, sir? Dismissed? We have work to do. Despite it all, we got our final Starfleet clearance to depart. So if you'll fetch Mr. Ermot, we'll knock out the final details of any outstanding repairs, and then we'll set out for Hotari. Yes, sir. I mean, I figured we would leave without him, but maybe not so bad. All departments reporting full mission readiness. We've got our full complement on board. This is my favorite moment, right now. The start of a new mission is always full of possibility. The Orion Syndicate would sell it as a drug. <laughs> Don't let the Admiralty hear you say that. Captain on the bridge. Sit. Sit, everyone. 
Where did we go? You all know, oh, there. I'm not big on speeches. We're embarking on the first mission since our refit. Let's make it a good one. Disengage docking clamps. Docking clamps released. Thrusters ahead, Mr. Handar. What is floating there? What's the black thing floating below our ship? Did we leave a crewman behind? I sure hope not. Like, what is this up there? That looks like someone is floating there. Our <laughs> the Hi. bridge looks like a World War II bunker. You know you take oh, I get to say the phrase. I get to say the thing. Helm, make way. That is the weirdest phrase to use, so I picked it. Get to sick in the sit in the exos cheat seat. Thank you. I'm fine. Really. Uh, oh no, yeah. what's going on? Do I need my you infusion don't look thing? So good. Is it because I'm Kabluian Kabluian? Oh dang. My mood ring. I have to get to sick bay. Go. Oh no, that's what the crew was worried about. Oh dang. Why don't I just Why don't I just have something on me all the time? Like people with an insulin deficiency or something. Why do I have to get all the way to sick bay to get my life-saving drug thing or whatever it is? Oh dang. It's purple goo. Well, that was quite a scare. Few minutes more, and it would have been one of the shortest tenues on record for a first officer. Is that the engineer that was out on the hull? That storm did a real number on him, but he'll live. Just needs rest. <laughs> you should worry about yourself. Your deridium levels got dangerously low and destabilized your cell structure. This is definitely one of the more memorable first days I can think of. My name is Dr. Aram Duval. Chief Medical Officer. To be honest, I've never met a Kobliad before. You're rare, I know. I was going to say special. Your people's numbers have dwindled despite the Federation's efforts to find a more readily available alternative to the Duridium you need to survive. Yet you joined Starfleet and managed to thrive. I imagine the responsibility must be overwhelming. Maybe even a burden at times. I know what it means, and I know the responsibility that comes with it. But I can't be anything more than who I am. And if someone has a problem with that or expects something else, then that's their problem. Expectation right. management. That's, that's very exactly important. Right. And don't worry, I won't treat you like a science experiment. I just do the science and leave the experiments to Solano. You don't agree with his methods? I don't agree with his definition of... I accidentally pressed that button and I still am confused why this risks. escaping wants me to leave the, the game. At stake. My professional opinion is that the accident took a toll. More than he's willing to admit. He's overstressed, operating in the pressure cooker of his own mind. Which is never a good headspace when the lives of your crew are at stake. What concerns me is that now he's even further away from the thing he's been chasing his entire career. Breakthrough discovery. The major innovation. Something he can put his name on. The 
more the time passes and the further out of reach it gets, the more risk he'll be willing to take. I think after what happened, Captain Solano's learned his lesson. And whatever ambition he once had is on hold for a while. He may say that, but we'll see what happens. And I have to give you credit for what happened on the bridge. It took guts to defy a direct order. Huh. I guess word travels fast around here. It's a small ship. And everyone's curious about the new XO. Fortunately, your cell structure's almost completely stabilized. And I'll spare us both the lecture, but I do feel it's my responsibility to remind you, without regular infusions of deridium, you will not live. It's as simple as that. Dang. Understood. Then, my work here is done. <laughs> What's up with the eyebrows? Lieutenant Bedrosian, I came to see if you were okay. We were all pretty worried on the bridge. No one knew what was happening. I'm feeling much better. Thank you. It's just part of who I am. You don't have to explain to me. I understand. I'm just glad you're okay. You trusted me earlier with the shields, and I appreciated that. I want you to know that I have your back. Did the doors Thank behind you. me just open while still being closed? Now, Carter, the emissions that gave you that burn are quite unusual, like everything else that goes with this storm. That's a combination of hyronolin and lectrazine to counter the radiation effects. That should help speed your healing. She's come by a couple of times to see you already. Man, all the love interests on this ship. Be brief. It's incredible. It's good to see you awake again. I was starting to get worried. Not that you aren't in good hands with Dr. Duvall. You did take one hell of a shot, though. Ah, come on. You know you can't get rid of me that easy. Don't push me, Diaz. You do not want to see me try. No, nope. <laughs> I am not getting on your bad side. I am a formidable enemy. <laughs> no. Lily was looking in on you, too, by the way. But since it's just us right now, I had a chance to think about this while I was away, and I thought it was important that I just come out and tell you. It's okay, Miranda. You can tell me anything. I know that. Then come on. Just spit it out. <laughs> I'm trying. Let me talk. What I'm trying to say is, we've been really good friends for a long time. Dang. But I got back here and I couldn't ignore it anymore. <gasps> I want to see if there's more between us. Than just being friends. Let's betray Nilly. Let's go. You don't have to explain it. I feel the same way. There is something between us. <gasps> so, do you want to find out what that something is? If it's there for you, and it's there for me, why not give it a try? I mean, why not? We're on Starship Enter not Enterprise Resolute, yes. and then we're a science <laughs> vessel. To be sure I heard that. Sorry to interrupt. Lovely. The patient needs to rest. If he wants to get back to his old self. Of course. I'll see you again soon. Dang. Holding hands in Starfleet. That's some hot stuff right there. Public displays of affection. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Cast adrift. Approaching the rendezvous point outside Atari space. Helm, bring us out of war. Dropping to impulse. Oh dang. Why, why are we so close in this asteroid field? That's not how space works. Shield integrity holding. We can take it. We are at the correct coordinates to meet the shuttle. Commander Rydeck, find us our diplomat, if you will. Aye, Captain. Okay. Let's reduce the noise. Filter out environmental signals. I can manually tune what's left for Federation signal types. Whoop. Just turning the mouse. I've located the shuttle. Opening comms. On screen. That doesn't look shuttle good. Shuttle to Resolute. <gasps> shuttle to Resolute. 
Debris field. Lost maneuvering. I mean, it's spinning out. How about we go help? We don't need to hear the message. Can't get it any clearer. Yeah, you don't have to get it any clearer. You just have to help. It's just not happening. Track the beam. Come on. There we go. I could be captain. Oh, with, with this guy now? No. Diaz, you good to run the tractor emitter? Yes, sir. You sure? I'm sure. The USS Excelsior. Come on, Diaz. Okay, we can do it. First thing, lock onto the shuttle and stabilize the rotation. Of course. Let's pull it right into those asteroids. <laughs> I'm on it. What? Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, dang. Oh, no. Oh, no. The shuttle. The shuttle. Oh, just barely made it. Uh oh. That's gonna take out the shuttle. Here's the bridge. There's a large piece of debris headed for the shuttle. The tractor beam can't handle it. Can shoot it. Take it. Let's shoot it. I believe so. Let's shoot it. Don't we have phasers? Come on, let's shoot it. Intercept course. On it. All right, intercept course. That's some amazing, amazing calculations here. Here we go. Maneuvering thrusters bearing 53 Mark 17, 200 meters on an intercept course. Maneuvering. I always wonder if, if what they're saying means anything at all. Got it. We could have shot that thing. Would have a, about the same effect. Someone's working hard on the bridge. Oh no, 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 a tractor beam. Was it damaged? Whoop. <laughs> ah, we get a standing ovation. Nice. See, that what, that's what I mean about Starfleet. If we were just as supportive to each other in real life, the world would be such a better place. We got the shuttlecraft on board. Good job. We're on our way down to meet them. <gasps> Is that Spock? What? Oh my god. Leonard Nimoy? Captain, we'll be right down to meet you, sir. In that case, I will wait for him here. That is very logical. <laughs> That's not awkward at all. <laughs> Apologies for the landing, Ambassador. I was operating the tractor beam, sir. I take responsibility. Our arrival was the smoothest part of our journey. Your artistry with a tractor beam is commendable. Oh, Spock! They thought we were prepared for our arrival in Hotari space. But it is evident my craft was not sufficiently robust for such intense ionic activity. You sent a shuttle. The storm has been pretty intense. There was an element that was most unusual. Before you came to our aid, our maneuvering thrusters and impulse engines were rendered inoperable. So we attempted a short traversal at warp speed, only to find that we could not achieve warp at all. Even though our diagnostics computer showed no faults or anomalies. What do you make of that? When all indications say that warp speed is possible, but in practice, 
we find it is not. Well, this storm is one of the strangest phenomena we've ever encountered. It's disrupted other systems, and who knows what it might do to a warp drive. Yes, it would seem further investigation is called for. We'll take readings, run some additional diagnostic checks, and we'll get to the bottom of this. Quite logical, Petty Officer... Uh... Carter Diaz, sir. Thank you. Ambassador Spock. Excuse me. I'm honored to have you aboard. I'd like to get right to it. We're already behind. No. Oh. Got some recognition from Ambassador Spock himself. Ambassador Spock, my senior staff. It's not every day that a captain gets to welcome a Starfleet legend aboard. Hmm. You flatter me, Captain Solano. But legend implies the past tense, whereas I am very much focused on our present circumstances. I didn't mean to suggest you were stuck in the past. You're right, Ambassador. Not the most diplomatic choice of words. Your experience comes from the past. But our present situation calls for it. True enough. We were hoping you could fill us in on the details. We got the basics from Starfleet. Two formerly peaceful neighbors are now on the brink of war. Indeed. And the tension between them grows fiercer by the hour. <laughs> Olivia and Hotari. The Olivians are the more advanced species. They made first contact with the Hotari over a century ago. This is Tau, the Hotari moon. It is rich in dilithium, and for decades, the Hotari and the Olivians have shared a mining operation there. The Olivians provide the technological resources, while the Hotari have served as the labor force. The stability of that arrangement was the source of their peace until recently. The Hotari have suddenly and forcefully seized control of the mining operations and expelled the Olydians from their system. That is the official story as told by the Hotari when they requested Federation mediation. But the details remain scant. Communications between all parties have been limited by the ionic interference. How is it the Hotari were able to turn the tables and take the mines against superior forces, especially after decades in this arrangement? Unclear. The answer to that question may be the key to a new, lasting peace, and one that I hope we can uncover during these negotiations. But it is unlikely the relatively primitive Hotari forces would stand a chance against the Elydian fleet if this escalates to open war. Left unchecked, this conflict will result in more bloodshed, which is what we are here to prevent. And the dilithium trade hangs in the balance. Clearly the Hotari have been exploited in this relationship. Maybe we can persuade them peace is the more profitable alternative for everyone. They both profited from the mines. And for the Hotari, something is better than nothing. Peace is our objective, after all. The Hotari just won their independence. It's hard to believe they would give that up just for profit. I agree. It would be exceedingly difficult to bring the Hotari to that position. Neither the Elidians or the Hotari are members of the Federation, so we can't make them do anything. There is an additional complicating factor I should mention. In the past, the Federation has relied on the Elidians as a source of dilithium. <sighs> That certainly changes things. That's incredible. Now we got Federation skin in the game. Dilithium from a lot of places. So we've already played a part in this. Unfortunately, that is indeed the case, Commander Rydek. We're morally obligated to make this right. Hold on. 
Our only obligation is to negotiate the peaceful resolution of this conflict. Given the Federation's involvement in the Illidium Dilithium trade, Captain Solano and I must make every effort to appear neutral in these negotiations. What worries me is if this whole thing unravels and we're at the mercy of the storm at less than full strength. We can't let it come to that. Considering what the Ion Storm has done to our ship and the Ambassador's shuttle, we have to assume the Elidian fleet has had problems with it as well. This recent surge in the energy disturbance temporarily levels the playing field. Commander Westbrook is correct. The energy anomalies around the Hotari systems have been noted in the past. But they have never been observed on the orders of magnitude we have seen in recent weeks. It's man-made. The two sides talking instead of shooting at each other. That actually helps us negotiate a peace. And we'll take advantage of that as long as it works in our favor. And when it doesn't? All the more reason to learn as much about it as we can while we are here. We do not want to be caught unprepared should the energy anomaly continue to fluctuate. So I trust we understand our circumstances. We're operating on a strict timetable here, and we're going to be leaving for the negotiations shortly. Commander Westbrook, I want you to leverage our systems to investigate the anomaly from here while we're gone. Aye, Captain. Thank you all. Dismissed. I want to speak to both of you privately. Ambassador Spock, I'd like to make a formal introduction. My first officer, Commander Jara Rydek. Commander, as you are aware, there are limits to what Captain Solano and I can do in our official capacity as representatives of the Federation. But someone in an unofficial capacity, your first officer, for example, would not be bound by those restrictions. Commander Ryder could ingratiate herself to certain parties behind the scenes, where they may be more candid in revealing information that could lead to a resolution. Certainly, <laughs> we are on the resolution. No, on the resolute. Maybe that helps in this case. It would be unconventional. I'm honored to be included in the negotiation process. You are not just included; you are instrumental. Well, I hope Commander Rydek will have more luck finding out what really happened than we will through official diplomatic channels. The fate of the negotiations, the interests of the Federation, and the prospect for peace may very well depend on it. Well, that's pretty crazy. Mr. Diaz, I understand you have already discussed the warp drive failure with Ambassador Spock? I have. It is imperative that the Ambassador's shuttle be flight ready. I need you both to ascertain the root cause of the system failures he encountered. I'm surprised, Commander. I thought you would have wanted to work on Ambassador Spock's shuttle yourself. I respect the Ambassador and his many accomplishments. But I do not derive any satisfaction from interacting with his shuttle as if it were somehow transubstantiated through its association with him. Especially when I have the entirety of this starship to concern myself with. Well, when you look at it logically, yes, it is just a shuttle. No different than any of the others. There is plenty that is different about it, and that is what you are to investigate. <laughs> but please let me turn right with that guy. Scientific phenomena. We'll try to restrain ourselves. Then I will leave you to it. Make note of any abnormalities in your report. Carry on. It seems like he's warming up to us. He just always yeah. is neutral. <laughs> Even Chobok has to look at that face and know you've earned some real respect. And I have to admit that I owe you one. You sure do. You were right to make me go first. I don't know what I was thinking. You've put me out of trouble how many times? Call it even. Okay. At the very least, maybe I can track down that bottle of sorry and brandy you're still on the hook for. But first, we have work to do. 
that seems like a very dangerous thing, that these just kind of pop out of the floor. <laughs> what if Hello? someone stands on it? Let's run the diagnostic. Okay, yeah. Ooh, I press buttons. Ooh. Boop. Boop. <laughs> so, I know about your talk with Miranda. Oh, yeah? You do? She sent me a priority one dispatch right after your conversation. The eyebrows. I you. Both of you. They just go everywhere. But I'm only going to tell you this once. Don't screw this up. Because I would be very unhappy if you tried this out and then, I don't know, six weeks or six days later, I have to start splitting holidays between the two of you. All because things went south and you're not on speaking terms. Are you... upset? <laughs> Not on your life, Diaz. But you need to be careful. I like my friends and I like our group. I don't want to lose that. Is that thing done? Yeah, yeah it's wrapping up. Let's see. The relays along the primary EPS are blown. The backup relays are all intact. An EPS overload from the warp drive could cause that. But how did the shuttle end up dead in the water? Huh. Well, maybe the ship's data recorder can tell us something. Ooh. Boop. Here. They were only about eight minutes from their plotted warp point. No faults, just those warnings. What are they? Boop. I didn't even click on that. The warp field became inverted suddenly. I've seen this happen when the center warp coil cracks. A cracked warp coil throws a fault code. Still, we should take a look. And boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Subspace variance out of tolerance. What does that mean? It means the main navigation array lost sight of space somehow. Will the array going offline cause that? Yes, but it should have also thrown a fault code. Dang. There was a complete warp cascade failure. Wow. They're lucky the shuttle didn't turn inside out. Makes me think the computer panicked on the warp field equation. Any one of these failures should have thrown a fault. If it was caused by a system failure. Hmm. This caused the relays to blow. Roll forward to when that happened. Very odd. Yes, ma'am. Very odd indeed. So here, they take a moment to get their bearings and they attempt to re-engage the warp drive. There. That's the relays blowing. Boop, 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 boop. And look, there's another warp system alert. Now they're all the same. Subspace variants out of tolerance or warp inversions. Finally, there's a complete warp cascade failure. Then it's one of two things. Either a warp coil is cracked, or the navigation array is offline. That makes sense. Divide and conquer. You want to check the warp coils or the navigation array? I'll check the other. I so want to look at the warp this. coils. One of these systems is likely broken. I'll check the nacelles for a cracked coil. Oh. Uh. The tricorder can record and analyze data. Use two to equip and a whole serial tricorder. All right, okay. You must be close to some objects. Oh, oh, that's that's great. Some objects you can scan will activate a deep scan. During a deep scan, use Q and E to switch between different scan modes to search for glowing objects. The mode indicators on the tricorder will blink if there's an object in that mode. Okay. What? Oh, oh. The leading call shows evidence of routine something something. Okay. Central coids. Okay. 
In their standby field, warp coils produce a residual electromagnetic field. No deviations detected. Nothing there. I checked every coil on the port and cell for imbalances. If any coil in either engine were cracked, I would have detected it. So, it must be the navigation array. Except it's not. Checked and double-checked. Well, the readings don't lie. Here comes the security detail for the way team. No. Hey. I'm not here. <laughs> We're escorting the negotiating team to the surface as soon as they come down from the bridge. I don't want to interrupt some important work. I was just hoping to see you before I go. The captain and the others will be here any minute now. Should be an interesting ride down to the surface. You're the one with the important job to do. Keeping the captain safe. And Ambassador Spock. It doesn't always feel that way. Baking in the hot sun, standing guard next to an empty shuttlecraft. But it has its moments. Hey, Maris. Aren't these those button pushers you're always hanging out with? And you're the phaser jockeys we always beat in Parisi squares, right? All aboard Shucks. for Hotari! That another one of the captain's railroad things? <laughs> Gotta be. I just usually zone out by the time he gets to the whole uh, steam engines were the warp drives of their day part. Catch y'all later. You don't want to miss your train. I do have to go. Well, yes, that is your job. Not gonna lie, I'd rather not leave right now. Come on, let's be daring here. Let's be daring. <gasps> oh no. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah, it was. Save some of that for when I get back. You don't know if you're gonna see each other again. I mean, she's not wearing a red shirt, so I have some hopes, but it's an away mission in a security detail. Have you seen you? And we are. F we have formed an emotional connection to this character now, so it's kind of likely that they're going to be in trouble and or die. It's Larda Diaz. If you could float back down to reality, we still have a ways to go. Alright, where were we? So, the warp coils in the navigation array are fine, but the nav computer doesn't seem to think so. I'm out of ideas short of field stripping the shuttle from bow to stern. You want to take this out of the shuttle and throw it on the bench? Oh, real hands on maintenance. I like it. Okay, the nav computer is patched into the ship. The ship's computer can double check our work. If the shuttle's nav computer is putting out false data, we'll know it. Let's run through the shuttle's logs again. It's probably not a good idea to attach this, right? Warp field inversion and the cascade failure. However, the Resolute computer doesn't show the same subspace variance. We're in the same conditions that the shuttle was in when it failed. Why wouldn't the ship's computer get a matching result? What if the subspace variance was a momentary occurrence? That's a possibility, and it would explain why the simulation under our current sensor readings failed to reproduce the issue. But a subspace anomaly strong enough to cause a warp field collapse would leave graviton ripples for days. Let's run with the momentary subspace variance theory for now. Roll forward to the shuttle's attempt to re-engage the warp drive. We need the conditions of space around the shuttle at the moment of warp failure. Resuming simulation. Everything is gonna break if we do this. Error in warp field calculation. Cochrane formula variables are out of range. That right there. Take the shuttle sensor data from that moment. Computer, why did the warp field calculation fail? 
Warp field pressure return non-orthogonal. Results are undefined. That doesn't help. Wait, <laughs> what if we use a different Just ship? a generic error message. We'll resolute into the simulation instead of the shuttle. Yeah, it should warp just fine. Unless... Computer, run the simulation with the resolute. Resolute simulated. Computer, give me manual control on the warp power. Dang, let's go. Static field intensity, warp 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 Warp pressure is destabilizing. Error in warp field calculation. The warp drive has experienced a system-wide cascade failure. Warp field collapsed. Subspace variance is out of tolerance. Cochrane formula results are undefined. Bingo. what -o? The same moment when the shuttle failed to warp, so did the ship. Whatever happened to the shuttle just happened to us. The Resolute will not sustain warp. We can't leave Hotari space. Uh-oh. Oh, no. It's a handsome planet. But why is everything so dark? It's just seat of power. Ambassador Spock, Captain Solano, welcome to Hotari. We are honored you have come. My name is Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. The honor is ours, and this is Commander Jara Rydek, first officer aboard the USS Resolute. You'll find she has a keen mind and unique insight into the dynamics between the Hotari and the Lydians. We are honored to be here as representatives of the Federation. I'm so glad. These you... must be the representatives of the mighty Federation, the reigning authority in the galaxy. Or so we've been led to believe. Whether that's true or not remains to be seen. But either way, we're grateful you've made the time to come to our little corner of the universe. And you are? This is Galvin, and this is Citron, the heroes of the revolt in the mines. Those are some good looking aliens. Very well done. Let's hope this is the last time we ever have to come here. If you'll excuse me. I think we're about to begin. Did you hear the arrogance from that guy? I don't know what we're walking into here. But that guy was something. That may be true. But let's keep an open mind going into the negotiations. Hopefully the captain is completely useless. Many. Then let's hope he's the outlier. The Hotari have invited us as their guests, so we must show them the proper respect. Very cool design. Let's show strength. Ambassador Spock, welcome to Holtari Prime. The honor is mine, Your Majesty. That the Federation would send one of their most respected representatives is not only an honor to the Hotari people and their queen, but recognition of our stature and importance. Let's get on with it, shall we? With all due respect to the Federation and their ambassador, they have no authority here. 
We are not members of their alliance. We are not subject to their rule, nor yours. We demand the immediate return of all mining operations to Elydian control, as it has been for centuries and will be for centuries more. That has always been our understanding. That understanding has changed. Then you invite war. And if you cannot remain silent, you will be silenced. But his point is well taken. What is the Federation's interest in this matter? Perhaps you would have us trade one oppressor for another? The Federation remains neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution of this conflict. We are here at your request, Your Majesty. For now. I'm trying to keep an open mind here, but it's not easy. I thought they wanted us here. Was there something you wanted to say, Captain? Oh, no. My apologies. And what about the Cobliard? She's not. She part can of speak for herself, can't she? Then let her. Oh boy. This is our moment. Let's not put our foot in our mouth. Why am I walking up there? Could have spoken from my spot. Now then, one should know their place. What you might be somewhere else is not what you are here. Which is standing before a queen. And a queen deserves respect. A bow is not too much to ask. Is Hotari Prime part of the Hotari system? My name is Commander Jara Rydek, Your Majesty. I prefer to be called by my name, not my species. Then I suppose that makes us even, Commander Rydek. It sure does. You are Kobliad. Your people suffered brutal treatment at the hands of the Cardassians. Who hasn't? Their injustice towards the Kodliad is as unimaginable as it is unforgivable. Not unlike how we have been treated by the Alidians. As much as they'd have you believe they are the victims here, remember it was the Hotari who attacked us. Hundreds of innocent Alidians were slaughtered without mercy in those mines. The blood is on their hands, not ours. Quiet! If after all the Kobliad suffered, you finally had the chance to right that wrong, to get out from under their control, would you take it? Or would you negotiate a peace? I can't speculate on something that never happened, Your Majesty. Sadly, that opportunity never came for the Kobliad. No, it did not. But we'd be wise to learn from their example before we too find ourselves facing extinction. The Federation is the most powerful, most advanced alliance in the galaxy. It's widely known we have an abundance of dilithium in our mind. And it's in your interest to secure a steady supply. Your Majesty, if I may. Ambassador Spock would have us believe you're here as a neutral party in the interest of peace. So why are you really here? I want the truth, not your Federation rhetoric. It's possible the Federation has an interest in both peace and securing a steady source of dilithium. One does not preclude or prevent the other. But that's just my personal opinion. Given the Federation has done business with the Elidians for decades, I would agree. It's entirely possible, if not highly likely. What they haven't said, but cannot deny, is a simple truth. The Dilithium trade would not and will no longer exist without Elidian involvement. We created it for the benefit of everyone, especially the Hotari. We've given them warp technology, 
We've let them share in the profits. We've made their lives infinitely better than before dilithium was discovered. All of that goes away if the Federation turns a blind eye to their treachery. That is enough of your lies. The Why are you not saying anything? Of running the mines. We've done so for centuries. So tell me, who deserves control of the dilithium trade and the mines on town? Who should the Federation recognize? The Hotari or the Alidians? I don't have all the facts. I don't I can't I can't say that. It can only be one or the other. Not both. I assume the Hotari. Let's go if with that. I have to choose only one, then it would have to be the Hotari. Well said. How could the just and wise Federation make any other choice? <gasps> this is an outrage. The Federation has lost all credibility. The mines are ours. Lydia will not be deterred. We will take back our minds by any means necessary. Then we will see more blood spilled. I am more than willing to address your concerns, Your Majesty. Yours as well, Representative. But I suggest we could have a more productive conversation with a smaller group. Perhaps only the most essential representatives. I suppose there is some sense to that. <laughs> I hope we meet again. A glare from Ambassador's box, probably not good. Spock and I will cover everything on the diplomatic front. You make nice with the locals and see if you can get some answers. We need to find out why the Hotari are so willing to risk war. What happened in those mines? Yeah, I would like to know that. And we're going to try and find that out next time. Hope you enjoyed. I certainly did. Come check out the Discord. Check out the Twitch. We stream three times a week. And until then, thank you very much. Hope you have a lovely day. See you around the next one. Bye-bye.